each of the past three times that a new president has taken office, uh, he has promised a major reform of U.S. immigration laws. When President George W. Bush uh, took office in 2001, he immediately entered into negotiations with his friend, President Vicente Fox of Mexico, to try to reach a comprehensive accord that would legalize uh, many of the 11 million uh, illegal migrants uh, living in the United States then and create a guest worker program to allow Mexicans to come and work on a regular basis in the United States. September 11th, however, the events of, of the terrorist attack uh, killed that initiative. It was never uh, revived. In his second term in office, uh, President Bush went to the Congress and said, let's do this on our own. Let's do a comprehensive reform of immigration laws, path to legalization for many of the illegal migrants in the United States, new guest worker programs, broader overhaul of our laws on, on legal migration. Uh, he tried uh, for several years, but in the end couldn't get enough support in his own Republican Party, and the initiative died in Congress in uh, 2007. Barack Obama comes to, to office in 2009, has promised voters that immigration reform is going to be a first-year priority. But the financial crisis, uh, the priority that health care reform took, uh, really put immigration reform and, and other issues on the back burner, and uh, he simply never got to the issue, even if he had it wasn't clear there was Republican support in the Congress to move forward on anything uh, dramatic. So when a new president uh, takes office in January 2012 or President Obama is reelected, uh, one thing is clear. Any kind of ambitious, comprehensive package for reforming immigration laws is simply no longer on the table. It's not politically realistic. The best that can be hoped for in, in the next four-year period is a series of piecemeal reforms to long-standing problems in our immigration laws. The most likely area for progress is in the area of high-skilled immigration, uh, particularly if you're looking at uh, Chinese and Indian students who are coming to U.S. universities in great numbers. When they graduate, if they want to get green cards to allow them to live and work in the United States, they're, they're looking at waits of many years, sometimes upwards of 10 years before they're, they're going to gain permanent resident status. Um, the House of Representatives just recently uh, passed a bill, bipartisan support, that would have eased some of those backlogs. There are other uh, proposals that are before the Congress that would also try to encourage high-skilled immigration to the United States. I, I think those are a potential area of bipartisan cooperation over the next four years. But the issue of what to do about illegal migration will continue to loom large. Uh, even as the Congress has failed to act on any major policy reforms, we've seen successive administrations make a serious commitment to securing the border with Mexico against flows of illegal immigrants coming across that border. And, and we've really seen those efforts begin to take hold. The, the most recent numbers that are out on, on apprehensions at the border show that the number of people trying to cross illegally in the United States is a fifth of what it was 10 years ago and is the lowest we have seen since the early 1970s. So by any reasonable measure, the border is more secure than we have ever seen it before. The problem remains, however, what do you do with the settled illegal migrant population in the United States, which is still thought to number somewhere between 10 and 11 million people. These are people who have put down deep roots in the United States. They came at a time when our laws against illegal migration were largely overlooked and unenforced. They settled down, they found jobs, they married, they had children, often uh, have American spouses, they have American-born children. These are people who are unlikely to leave. The policies that are necessary to drive them out of the country are harsh and, and unproductive. Uh, the Obama administration this past year deported something like 400,000 people. It's an expensive undertaking and one with no real payoff. We've seen laws in states like Alabama and Georgia, uh, South Carolina, Arizona, which have driven illegal migrants out of those states, but they've simply resettled in other places. Uh, the reality is that enforcement alone is not going to solve this legacy problem. And it hurts our economy to spend that much on deportation and to deprive the children of these people the chance of university education. That cannot be a sustainable policy. And so a real challenge for the next president is going to be, is there any way 
to deal in a positive fashion with this legacy illegal immigrant population. It hasn't been something that presidents have been able to achieve over the past decade. It will likely take a level of leadership out of the president and out of Congress that we haven't seen in recent years. It may be too much to hope for, but it will be the challenge on the immigration front that looms the largest for the next president.